different types of acne are all really on a continuum with each other. Um, all acne starts as something called a microcomedone, which is basically a blocked hair follicle. Sebum gets built up behind there, which is the oil the skin produces, and uh, the, the hair follicle walls can thin, it can get inflammation going on, at which point people usually call it a, a pimple. You know, there's a red spot that's raised up. After that, if there's actually rupture underneath the skin, you can get a cyst formation with pus, uh, and you can get a, a white uh, bump on the face. You can even get scarring as a result of this because the uh, process is so inflammatory in the skin. And that we call a cystic acne. Um, so they're all related to each other, but they're all on a continuum from mild and non-inflammatory to very severe and very inflammatory. Treatments for acne run a whole gamut from over-the-counter preparations, all of which contain one of two active ingredients, either salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. Those two ingredients have some anti-inflammatory properties, some uh, keratolytic, which means that it uh, helps to dissolve or break apart the dead skin cells on the surface of the skin, um, as well as some antimicrobial properties. And they can be very effective in mild acne. Um, anytime acne goes beyond that, where there's especially an inflammatory component or uh, just an impacted um, comedone that just won't open up, we need to move into prescription agents. Topical agents there uh, include retinoids, which are very effective for all types of acne, uh, sulfur products, um, hydroxy acids, these kind of things. And then we move on to the systemic uh, agents. Antibiotics are often used, especially when there's lots of inflammation present. And as a final um, treatment, Accutane or isotretinoin can be very effective, especially for cystic or scarring acne. Um, and that uh, is a little bit more of an investment in, in time and uh, monitoring, but has uh, very effective uh, results. Acne is a genetic condition, and there's, again, a range of severity from none at all. You can have, find families where acne skips a generation to lifelong, difficult to control acne. About two-thirds of people will experience acne as a teenager. Uh, more severe, ten, it tends to be more severe in uh, boys than girls in the teenage years. And up to 20% of adults will have acne. And again, and at that point, women seem to suffer uh, proportionally greater than men. Um, but it's it, the same processes are going on, but there are subtle and important differences between teenage acne and adult acne. Most of the uh, prescription uh, preparations that we use have an important preventive component to them as well as a treatment component. So the goal is first to clear the face and then to keep that uh, clearance maintained. I tend to uh, simplify a regimen once we've achieved a good clearance and often a single agent is enough to keep you clear. Um, the, the retinols, Differin, Tazerac or Retin-A all have uh, important properties for keeping the skin free of acne. Scarring is something that happens on a physical level and in some ways on an emotional level as well. When severe acne has been there, those marks can persist long term. The first thing I think it's really important to know is the skin does go through remodeling uh, for years after an injury has happened and even uh, very noticeable acne scarring will begin to soften with some time. Um, more severe scarring than that can be, be benefited by laser therapy. Uh, the skin and the collagen can be heated and it will uh, constrict a little bit and tend to smooth out the acne. The skin can also be resurfaced and uh, new skin cells move into the area because of the, the resurfacing done either from chemical peels or laser therapy. And finally, um, the retinols that we prescribe to treat acne and prevent acne also encourage new collagen growth and can uh, treat scarring, superficial scarring to a great extent.